There's news coming out of the UN today that the United States will not take the floor at the United Nations Human Rights Council as the 47-member state forum debates human rights violations committed in Palestinian territories. The decision to not appear follows an apparent dismantling of the relationship between the United States and Israel that is manifesting itself in the Obama administration's criticism of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Washington's recent threat to reassess U.S. policy toward the state. Mark McNulty, Communications Director for the Republican Jewish Coalition, joins me now to discuss. Mark, great to see you. When the U.N. Human Rights Council session opened in Geneva earlier this month, the U.S. Secretary of State, John Kerry, said that the U.S. would oppose any effort to delegitimize or isolate Israel at the U.N. and elsewhere. Based on what we're seeing today, do you still believe this to be true? Yeah, I, I, I would take him at his word until uh, his actions say otherwise. And, uh, you know, we're, we, we would prefer that Israel stay a bar- bipartisan issue um, with both de- Democrats and Republicans uh, supporting the state of Israel. Um, you know, that's, that's a little bit more questionable these days with uh, some of the actions and some of the words that have come out of this White House. However, I don't believe that um, this latest uh, flap today Um, has anything to do with that. I think that uh, hopefully, as of right now, we believe that the Obama administration will continue to back Israel um, at the UN and elsewhere. You mentioned words coming out of the White House. White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest last week in response to Netanyahu's election eve disavowal of a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. said that he that the US would reevaluate its position toward the state. What do you make of the White House's messaging here? Uh, you know, is it part of a larger pattern? Is it an effort to perhaps deflect attention from the Iranian nuke negotiations? I think it's definitely part of a larger p- pattern um, with administration officials uh, anonymously leaking uh, sort of uh, aspersions uh, towards Benjamin Netanyahu and other things like that. Um, I think it's part of a worldview that that thinks that uh, you know Israel may not be um, the champion of democracy that Republicans and most Democrats think that it is, and they're pursuing this agenda uh, full bore. And it also goes to the Iranian negotiations, where the people who have the most to lose um, by a bad deal are the Israelis. And Obama is so desperate for a deal that he would rather have a bad deal than no deal, Mm -hmm. whereas Benjamin Netanyahu and many Republicans uh, would rather no deal rather than a bad deal. Now, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has since defended his position by saying that it's the current political landscape, that the current political landscape is not conducive to a a two-state solution because of the coalition between the PA and Hamas. But I want to shift gears a little bit. Are you seeing a shift among Jewish voters, would you say, which historically has been one of the strongest Democratic voting blocs in terms of their sentiments toward the Democratic Party? As a result of, well, as a result of perhaps the diplomatic war, we can call it, against the Jewish state. Well, I think it's part of a uh, larger overall trend. Um, we saw sort of the bottom of Jewish support for Republicans in 1992. Um, we've seen that with an uptick out of seven of the last six uh, elections, all the way up to 31% for uh, Mitt Romney. We saw a little bit of a dip um, in 2008 um, of about 10% down to 21 for John McCain. But I think because of a lot of the actions that Barack Obama has taken, the way that he's treated Benjamin Netanyahu in the state of Israel, uh, we saw a 10% gain up to 31% in 12. And then also in exit polls from the midterm elections, Uh, It was around 34 percent of Jews who voted for Republicans this time. So uh, we expect and we hope that um, this number will keep going up as Democrats uh, continue to prove that uh, they may not have Jews' best interests in mind. But Democrats still enjoy the lion's share of the of the Jewish vote. Uh, President Obama, as you said in the last election, about 70 percent and uh, 30 percent for the Republicans, roughly, which is still a relatively high number, but not that high. You know, the thing is, is that the GOP has sort of always played with this idea that the Jewish community will shift their votes during an election, but it's never really materialized. So do you actually think that it will in this instance? Yeah, most definitely. I I don't necessarily think that uh, there's going to be a wholesale change overnight. Um, I think what we've proven over the past about, you know, 20 years is that uh, as the generation of Jews understand um, where this Democratic Party is and the 
the shift leftward and the fact that in 2012 during their um, platform convention um, when the subject of Jerusalem as the capital uh, of Israel was brought up uh, the entire room booed um, I think that younger generations of Jews are, are more inclined uh, to support Republicans and as you know that generational sh shift happens um, we will continue to see more Jews vote for Republicans last question Mark how will the yeah. RJC, the Republican Jewish Coalition, show the Jewish community that Republicans are more on their side? Oh, I, I, I think we're doing it, but we're, we're not the, the, only, the only avenue towards that. We've been doing that for a while. We've been supporting uh, pro-Israel and pro-Jewish candidates. We've supported um, you know, people like Marco Rubio, Lindsey Graham, uh, the Mitt Romneys of the world. Um, but it takes our candidates as well. Um, we saw today Ted Cruz, who announced for president, um, a good two, three minutes of his speech um, and his largest standing ovation um, was uh, in relation to supporting Israel. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not only our organization, which, you know, that's our stated goal, but it's also the candidates and the leaders who we pick as Republicans um, to go out there and advocate our message that they advocate um, uh, things that the RJC believes in. All right, Mark, great talking to you. Thanks very yeah. much. Thanks.